Hello YouTube. I thought I'd make a short video on a new uh, gun I just traded for the other day. Uh, I actually traded an AR pistol that I had built uh, for this. Um, was looking through arms list and uh, seen this there and uh, reached out to the guy and, and uh, we hit upon a trade. Um, this is my first Kimber that I've ever owned. I've owned a lot of 45s throughout the years, but uh, this one's not in 45. It's in 9mm. And uh, I got a good trade on it. And uh, I'll give you all a look. Like I said, it is used. It's not new. Uh, as is a lot of my guns that I get. I have to sometimes trade to get what I want. Uh, but it come with most of the paperwork here. Uh, manual, everything. Uh, only thing that wasn't in the box was the uh, safety lock, and nobody uses those anyway. They typically get thrown away. So what I got in the box was the pistol, and it came with the one Kimber magazine. Um, I assume this is the uh, the factory magazine because it's marked Kimber. It's it's nine rounds. Um, it looks like a really high quality mag. I've read on some of the forums where uh, some of people have problems with the Kimber mags, uh, but uh, seems to be well made. Uh, it is very difficult to load, I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, the gun is unloaded. There's nothing in the gun. So, don't worry about it being, being loaded. Um, it also came with uh, two 10-round magazines. And I'm not sure what brand those are. I don't know what that logo uh, there, if you can see that. I don't know if you can get to see that logo or not, if the camera will focus. But if you happen to know what logo that is, you know, leave a comment down in the comments. Seem to be sturdy made magazines. Um, looks like a Y, maybe a CY. I don't know who makes those. If you know, give me a shout out. Uh, these hold 10 rounds. Now, when I got the gun, you know, I read on some forums. Uh, I realize that Kimber sometimes doesn't have the best uh, name when it comes to some of their guns. I know that sometimes their, their products are not uh, as good as maybe their price should warrant. So I've read a lot of bad things about Kimber and a lot of people praise them. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, the gun itself is about, it's not perfect. It's uh, probably about 95%. You know, it's got some dings and scratches and uh, got an idiot mark here where somebody's uh, reassembled it and slid the, the uh, slide catch up in there. But overall, it's in good shape. Uh, it's a beautiful gun. Uh, so when I first got it home, first thing i had done, you know, knowing that Kimbers are sometimes a little finicky, is I thought, you know, what can I put through it that if it's going to fail, will probably fail. And I thought, mm, I got some steel case ammo. So I put uh, 50 rounds of uh, uh, Tula uh, through it uh, without one single hitch. Now, I wasn't accuracy testing it, I was more just function testing it, so I wasn't, uh, basically went out on my back porch and shot over the hill. So, uh, just to function test and make sure it cycled uh, properly. Uh, I have to say the gun functioned flawlessly. And when I go to the range, I'm going to try and do, um, you know, a video more on the accuracy of it. Um, most of my guns are have, have are polymer guns, so... Uh, I do have a Taurus PT-100 in 40 caliber, but that's the only two steel guns I have. Uh, the gun's heavy, stainless steel slide. The grips are beautiful. Uh, it's got a nice blue finish on the side, matte on top. The blacked out rear sight. Uh, I look at that as more of a target sight maybe than than a something you would use for home defense or... Uh, you know, um, square post front sight, they are drift adjustable and replaceable. Uh, the one thing that shocked me about it is I didn't realize, but it has a plastic mainstream, mainstream, 
mainspring housing. Sorry about that. Got a little tongue tied. Uh, but that's plastic. Uh, that's something I may change out at a later date. But overall, fit and finish on the gun is quite well. Uh, I was really surprised at how well it shot. Recoil was nothing. Uh, the uh, 10 round magazines, when you put those in, they do extend out a little bit past the base. Uh, but they fit in there well, seem to uh, look well. Now the trigger pull on this is, uh, it's really good. And I've heard people say that uh, that uh, they can not be that good at triggers from the factory. But this one, and I don't have a trigger scale, so uh, I'm going to guess that it's, you know, you got that much take up right there. Very little take up. And then it hits solid wall. And then you can kind of see it snaps. I'm going to guess it's around five pounds. Now, the reset on it is like nothing. It's like right there. And it's it jumps out there. It's audible. It's tactile. And then you're right back on it with a little bit of take up and right back to the hammer fall. So overall, I have to say that I've owned some, uh, I've owned a couple Colts in the past that really didn't have a good a trigger as this. So, uh, I have to say it's, it's a pretty awesome trigger. Um, overall, I'm really satisfied with the gun. Like I said, uh, I'm going to take it to the range at a later date, put some rounds to it, put some on target. Um, when I do, I'll try to take y'all along with me for the shooting part of it and, uh, and get a look at it. But overall, I think it's a keeper. I think it's one I may hang on to. Like I said, I do trade. Uh, but occasionally you'll get something that you just, you just really like. And honestly, uh, when I was growing up as a kid, one of the first guns I ever owned was a 1911. Um, actually it was a Norinco 1911, uh, it was, it was pretty crudely built, rough, but, um, uh, it shot and it shot everything I put in it. Uh, and I used to reload and, uh, it would shoot 185 grain jacket at hollow points. Pretty much anything I stuck in it, it would shoot. And, uh, but if you like this video, um, uh, give me a thumbs up. Thanks.